Ready? All right. So for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Jonathan Dankoff. Me and Sebastian Long run a salary survey for the industry. Um, the awkward guy at the parties who walks around asking everybody how much they make, except you all tell me, which is great. Um, so last year, we had 240 responses and only 150 qualified. Uh, there was a bunch of people, I think, we were still building a relationship with the community and showing you guys that you could trust us with this very sensitive data. And so there were a lot of sort of looky-loo responses where people answered the first two questions and when we asked salary, they just bounced out. Um, I think presenting this on stage last year added a lot of legitimacy to this effort. And so what we're seeing now is, I mean, I, I had to disqualify five responses, which I think is pretty incredible. Um, Again, just a note that data, you know, everybody here knows how it is working with data. Particularly, this is self-report. It is subject. I mean, if a bunch of people in one location decided to get together to game the system, that would work. So don't do that. <laughs> um, everything is reported in... So when you gave me the salaries, you gave them to me in your local currency, but everything that you're going to see here is converted into US dollars for comparison. So when you're looking at a number for a location, just make sure that when you see it, like... You don't go like, that doesn't make sense in pounds. It's because it's in US dollars. Do a conversion in your head. That'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pull it up on your phone. You know where the numbers are. And then, uh, so by very, very, very popular demand, this year, everything's in medians, no more averages. <laughs> it was a lot more work. Uh, and then two quick notes, because I get these questions a lot, and I just want to get it out on the table. Yeah. Uh, these things are true. Um, salary is very heavily influenced by regional factors such as cost of living and local employment markets. I'm not, I, I, it's just out of scope for me to go in and add all that in. But yes, absolutely, it is a thing. And then the other thing is, we're only look, I only look at base salary um, through some of the investigations that we've done. We found looking at bonuses or stock options or uh, insurance, it, it complicates it and it sort of makes it hard to get a single frame of reference. So if we only look purely at your base salary, it tends to make it easier to compare. Um, but keep in mind that if you're negotiating or if you're using this data to uh, you know, think about a total global compensation package, that won't be an accurate picture of everything that you're getting. Um, so first, location. Just a quick note to show you where the researchers are in the world. Unfortunately, again, this year, rest of world, we got less than five. So anybody watching the stream from Australia, uh, tell your friends to answer more. Um, this year, one of the other things that we did is we split North, Cal Ca uh, North California and Southern California because that tended to be a, an enormous group. And then... This we didn't expect, but Canada East doubled. So all the, other, all the other distribution of people around the world tends to be very similar to last year. Uh, but Canada, we have nearly double the amount of people from East. So what I'll do next year is break out Montreal. And I think that'll probably make something a little bit more even. But thank you to everybody in Canada East for answering. Um, this is uh, quite literally the money shot. So take your picture. This is the one that people want to see. So this is in thousands of US dollars looking at salaries across, the, across North America. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I'm not super good at stats, but I pushed a bunch of buttons in StatWing, and it told me that uh, location is actually the strongest predictor of salary. So it beats out experience. It beats out education, title, anything. Really, the, the number one thing you could do if you want to make more money is move. <laughs> um, this is one that I think is, you know, this is another one that I got out of because this year we asked, like, what do you want to know? And one of the things that came back the most was, hey, last year you sort of comboed juniors and mid-level staff together when you showed the world map, and it's not super useful because the people that need this the most are people starting in the field. Uh, generally, most mid-level and upper have some sense of self-worth, but it's very difficult for juniors to know what they should be asking for, and it's often the first time they're negotiating a salary. So for those of you in the room or at home that are looking to get into the field, I think this is a more accurate number for you. Uh, something that's just really disappointing, not a single junior answered the survey from Washington. So you Seattle folks got some work to do about telling the juniors to answer this, because I can't help you if you don't. Uh, cool. Education. So, here it is. These are the numbers. Uh, it's interesting, I think, here that uh, for the most part, 
I'm going to make some, some wild assumptions, and if you don't agree with me, you can come and yell at me on the Discord that my analysis is wrong, which will be fun, and then we can try to slice it in a different way and go that way. But it seems like it's easier to get a job if you have a master's than a bachelor, and that'll get you in the door, but it doesn't necessarily make a difference in your compensation. Maybe that's wrong? I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's, it's harder to get in, but once you get there, like if you can prove that you deserve to get in the door, you'll get paid about a similar amount. Um, moving on to experience. This is actually a question from last year that I thought I would rerun the numbers on to see if it still held true. I think um, somebody asked me if, generally speaking, can you trade basically time in your life, getting a PhD for time in your life at work, and is there some sort of truck between actual on-the-job experience and school experience? And it does, I mean, looking at the shape of the data, it does seem to show that there is a degree of balance between, well, you can work your way up or you can study your way up, and there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, and so they are lightly interchangeable to s some degree. The best thing, obviously, is to be super educated and old. <laughs> Um, again, this one, there's not a ton of interesting things to say, but people tend to always want to know like, what are the right fields or what fields tend to be represented in the discipline and how much money those individual fields make. Uh, the one thing that I found most interesting when I re-sliced this was if I look only at juniors, then this, this median salary tends to be quite flat. So for the most part, independent of your chosen field, um, you'll get a, a similar starting salary, uh, but for whatever reason, your field can determine how far you can go with it, is what it seems like, which is noteworthy. With regards to seniority, so looking at title, uh, hopefully this isn't really surprising. Um, you make more money, the more important you are. Nailed it. Um, with regards to experience, similar, similar story. So there is an increase, you know, stick around. It's worth it. Don't switch careers. Games user research can ease you. Uh, yep, that's the one. Gender. This one is tricky. I will go through it carefully because I don't want to say anything bad. This is good news. Uh, we are 50% above the rest of the games industry in terms of representation of women. Uh, so we're about a third. It's very similar to last year. Very good news. Uh, similarly here, though, we still aren't... This needs to normalize. I think the, the very unfortunate reality is that it'll, it'll take a while, but we should see in the coming years these numbers push down so that these bars line up, and then this one will keep moving up. Uh, and that's good. So the next slide is the one that I, I, I lost a lot of sleep over and uh, showed pretty much every woman in this room that I know because I was very worried about what it shows. If I'm right, it's really good. <laughs> but I'm sure that somebody's going to tell me how I did it wrong. But essentially, it shows that most research managers aren't pigs, I guess. Like it looks like across different titles, men and women doing the similar work get similar pay. And I hope that that's true. If it's not, tell me why, and I'll re-slice the data, and I'll gladly look at it to expose whatever is wrong in the way that I did it. Um, if, if it is true, it's excellent. And I think it's, it's something that we can be extremely proud of as a group, because it's wild. I, I don't think this is true in most places. But if it's true for us, that's something that's, that can be very I think you know, we, could, we should wear that really proudly. Um, there is one thing that I think is worth pointing out, so you can see here how the, the mean is much higher to the inner quartile range up here for men. That's because there's a bunch, all of like, the earners that are so bizarrely above the rest of the group, those tend to be mostly men. So like the, 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 the ones where Excel is like, oh, something's wrong with this number, that's individual men. And because it's individual, I can't show the data, so I, I take them out of the slide. So there, are, you know, there is something going on there where like the absurdly high earners tend to be men, and there's not enough women that are in that same category. But for the most part, this is good news. I'm not seeing a lot of very angry faces, so I think maybe people agree with me that this is fine. Good. Sweet. Uh, various. So here, this is less about salary and more about other interesting things. Uh, so I, I wasn't expecting this. We, I didn't realize that this discipline was so um, 
was so dominated by console researchers and, and, and less by mobile researchers, except it is quite cool that mobile researchers tend to get paid better. And I'm not sure what that's a product of. I'm sure somebody in mobile will explain to me. Um, because it's not, you know, my first guess was like, oh, it's probably bonus structures because of their live plans and it tends to be more live driven. But then I was like, oh yeah, right, I didn't put bonuses in there. So now I'm not sure at all. And I would love somebody that works in mobile to tell me why you guys are so much better off than the rest of us. <laughs> uh, this is a great number. I love this number. Work-life balance, median hours worked for everybody who earns less than $120,000 US is 40. So I think in general, another thing that we'd be quite proud of as an industry, that we are good at keeping uh, mental health and we're good about you know, making sure that we have a healthy work-life balance within our groups. And I, I think that's you know, fairly true. Uh, for people over 120, the median only goes up to 245, which is still, you know, I think, a relatively healthy number. This is my favorite slide in the whole thing. This is really cool. There's, a, there's some interesting ways to look at it, I think, and I, I, again, I'm very curious to hear how other people are considering this. But essentially, we asked people to self-report uh, how mature they felt their organization was, and then I matched that against the salaries at that, uh, at that level of maturity. And so I don't know which way you want to, I mean, the correlation is there, I don't know which way you want to pretend the causation goes, whether it's people get paid more at organizations that are more UX mature because they, they are willing to invest more, or the more, you know, the more work that you're willing to put into raising UX maturity, the more your salary will go up. Either way, it's a great story about you know, capping off what Randy started with, that this is a responsibility that we all have to really grow the amount of influence and impact that we have within our organizations. And if you do it, you get paid. So like, it's a good idea. Um, yeah. Satisfaction, more good news uh, this year. So very similar to last year, nine out of 10 people like their job, so keep coming. Um, eight out of 10 do still want more money. This is super cool. So CNN, I think, it was, or at least I found the article on CNN, I don't know who ran the study, but they found that um, there is a, a slight correlation of happiness and salary up to around 75,000 US dollars is the, other, is the study that I found, and that is true within our own data set. That, um, when you look at just these people, the very satisfied salary people, their median salary is 78. So, science works. Uh, I asked people this year, if you could fix any one thing. <laughs> fix a thing, what do you want to fix? And so people talk broadly about two, two topics. They want more and they want better. And so under more, it was more sharing, more sharing within their own organization, more sharing across organizations, more student jobs, more opportunities for internships. They want more, they want to push their methodologies away from just purely usability. They want to be doing more tasks, more interesting work. They want to be involved more early. They want more innovation, not just in methodologies, just across the, the products that we deliver and, and, and the work that we're doing. And they obviously want more money. Oh, and more appreciation from developers. I guess some people feel like uh, we're not, you know, we're not being celebrated enough by the people we work with. With, in, with regards to better, uh, people talk about better integration with the design. Uh, these are roughly in order of how often they come up. Better integration with design, better integration with analytics, which I think is a, a very good one. Uh, better career development. So like, it is kind of weird that there's really just like junior, middle, manager, and then, so people want better paths for their careers, um, better accessibility practices across the development landscape, a better understanding by us of development. So some, some people felt that you know, most researchers would benefit from understanding dev better. And then more evangelism, just more of us reaching out outside of our community and talking about the work that we do and, and talking about how important it is. And the last one is usefulness. So I, yeah. It takes up a bunch of my time. Is it worth it? And the answer, broadly speaking, is yes. One out of five people in this room and one out of five people watching at home have used this either to just check and see, like, am I getting paid right? 30%, um, this is, I mean, I thought that was wild. 30% of the 20% of the 200 people, whatever that comes out to, uh, are managers who have used the data not to fight for themselves, but to fight for their entire teams. And so they've taken this number and they've gone, you know what, uh, big, big boss, give me more money, which is cool. And then 57% used it, obviously, to negotiate for themselves, which is cool. Alex? Everybody that works for Alex, you're welcome. Uh, quickly, some closing thoughts. Um, again, thank you so much for trusting us. I mean, I, I understand how 
precious this relationship is. Uh, you know, we don't take it for granted. We understand how, how important it is that we treat this you know, with, the, with the respect it deserves. Thank you so much for sharing it. I hope to see this continue moving forward and, and working with this and doing more interesting things. Uh, again, there is a Discord channel just for salary questions. That's the only thing it's there for. And so anything that you saw, if you think you have an interesting explanation because my analysis was super quick and dirty, or if you have another way that you'd like to see it sliced or something else, go in. I try to be as reactive as possible. Sometimes, you know, work and life get in the way. Uh, I, I think one of the interesting things that we want to do th for next year is I, somebody in this room, I want to bring on a third person. So I want to bring on a statsy or volunteer than either me and Seb are. Uh, neither of us are particularly great at stats. And uh, I either want you to do this or I want you to tell me why it can't be done, but I, I, I want to make a calculator. I want to make a thing where you say, like, I'm from Seattle, I have three years' experience and a master's, and I do this thing, and I like this part, and I do that. And I'll be like, you should probably have this much money. And I, is that a thing? Can I do that? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> That's it. Thank you.